the kind of project we conceived initially was like, oh, can we bring artificial intelligence to material science? And the product will be very, uh, something which, which, which will be very unique and it's gonna push the entire material science field in a very positive direction. And it's gonna be like a big jump. So the nature of research was like bringing two different sort of components of completely uh, not so connected field into one specific project. We were trying to bring artificial intelligence to material science and we were mainly focusing on natural language processing, which means we need a lot of text for analysis. This text has to come from somewhere. And that was my first step towards reaching out to library and then eventually to data collab. Uh, so in the beginning, I wasn't sure that how can I actually access, for example, Spring and Nature uh, API or Elsevier API and all those things and what are the terms and licenses and copyrights issues over there. So I needed someone who knows how to deal with this publishing giant, so to say, and what are the issues when you try to access all these things. So that was the, in the beginning. Yeah, we. I realized as a material scientist that, oh, I don't have the adequate skill set or the know-how of how to actually proceed. And then this whole journey started, I, oh, within Carnegie Mellon, what sort of people we can reach out to or uh, uh, people who are interested in these kind of problems and what are the resources or the tools are available at my disposal. I started teaching an R class in uh, data analytics for CMU at the Heinz School uh, sometime last year. And I had been looking to um, grow my data science and data analytics skills personally, uh, as well as being able to reach out to others and uh, see if I could pitch in and help. So R is my specialty but I also use uh, Python programming quite a bit to know about SQL and just data analytics and statistics in general. So it was uh, serendipity. I actually received an email from the CMU libraries notifying, uh, looking for volunteers for the data collab. And uh, after reading through it, I, I, I decided to throw my hat in the we ring. We started doing some scraping of uh, these papers and published articles. At that point, we realized that we need more people in the team to do all sorts of analysis. And that's where we, me working with Hua Jin, who is from CM Library, we, we started reaching out to people. And I think at that point, Mike was interested in joining on this problem. And we were like, oh, we will be glad to have you because we definitely need people. It's a pretty good fit actually because of the kinds of skills that uh, I was looking at. Some of the early things we were doing was uh, uh, web scraping and uh, like Amit was saying, uh, you know, text analysis. And I have some background in that. And I also have some background in uh, metals as well. So I knew a little bit about the key terms and things like that. So it really turned out to be a good uh, cooperative uh, opportunity uh, on both sides, I think. That's really how I got involved in this project. Jin uh, set us up to uh, have some dialogue. I, I think all three of us met in the very early stages and then Amit and I met and, and, and it evolved over time. But one of the very early uh, elements of this was web scraping. And uh, I had been doing some web scraping with my uh, R class that I was teaching. And I thought, well, this is relatively simple. We can go out to this web page and, and, and pull down some of this data and start to do an analysis on it. And then as the project evolved and we learned more uh, about these sites and about the proprietary nature of the sites and the fact that some of this content is blocked and it's not as simple to get to, the project definitely evolved over time. So initially we just started because of the need of this project. And then we realized, oh, this is, expanding at a pace which is which which is not gonna be like go uh doable if we have just two or three people in the project so we started expanding as of now we have multiple students working in this project we also collaborated with one of the professor from lti which is languages technology institute within Carnegie Mellon, and she's an expert in uh, uh, natural language in general and has a background in uh, uh, material science, applying basically natural language to material science. I forgot to mention the name, uh, but uh, is Professor Emma Struble, and she joined LTI very recently. 
So that is where we are right now. It's definitely evolved from the early stages and uh, certainly moved from some of the um, requests at the beginning of the project to, uh, to, to becoming a more sophisticated uh, project uh, with many more people contributing to it uh, right now. Ahmed, if I'm not mistaken, it was basically me and you at first with Wajin uh, and, and, and the Data Colab, and from there it, 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 it kind of uh, expanded. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I think I've found the, uh, what is sort of like the culture within Data Collab and within CMU libraries and uh, other places was very welcoming. Uh, and so I didn't find any trouble in the beginning. Uh, was it helpful in uh, overcoming some initial hurdles? Yes, because I didn't knew uh, uh, much about natural language processing, how these uh, Springer, Elsevier, and other resources where we have the actual text, uh, how they operate. So uh, having that sort of background directly given or provided to us all this information from CMU library was very helpful. And so, it gave me, personally, it gave me the confidence, okay, that uh, we can do this project because this was uh, a project which started in a way because of COVID, um, because we had some extra time. And uh, personally for me was like, oh, can we do something interesting? And I was trying to build a problem around uh, developing a database for material science. And uh, I wasn't sure how to do this thing. And while when COVID started and things were at home, so we, we were like, oh, this is a computation project we, and we can do something about it. So it gave me confidence after having multiple interaction in the first month that, oh, this is doable. Uh, within Carnegie Mellon, we have all the expertise and, and the resources to do or to materialize this problem. And, and I don't have to do this thing by myself uh, alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like very much uh, the nature, how it evolved and uh, became its own thing. Now it's not my project. It's basically a project which is shared by 10 other people. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy that whole journey. The early discussions that we had, they were uh, moderated. Uh, like Amit said, Wan Jin um, set some things up and we had a series of Zoom meetings just like this and uh, talked over the project and the requirements and, and uh, shared some emails. And, and I, I think there was very little friction to start the project and to, and to understand. Again, it evolved over time to be sure, uh, but very early on introductions were made and uh, the project was described as, as it was conceived at that time. And uh, I think the collaboration went uh, very, very smoothly. I, I, I did not find it awkward or uh, difficult at all. Uh, I think the interesting thing about this project was that we didn't have any agenda in this project. It was from the beginning, we all, I think, knew it somewhere. Maybe we were not expressing it explicitly, but we were, there was like a known understanding that this is like sort of an exploration of this. Uh, like the nature of the project is come fundamentally explore this specific intersection of these two fields. So the nature of the problem and how we are approaching, it gave each, everyone who was part of the team to bring their own way of actually handling this specific process and take on that, oh, I can look after into this specific task and tell you maybe in a week what's, what's, what's possible, what's not possible. From the beginning, we knew that this we are just exploring. We, we might find something useful, we may not. And there's a lot of space to explore. So given we have more and more people coming in, we never have shortage of problems to handle. And everyone has the choice to basically choose what, they, what sort of problem they wanna handle given the larger scope of the project. So I think that made the process very smooth. Even the undergraduate, uh, some of the students were sophomore freshmen even they have the opportunity to say that oh i can i can i want to jump onto this specific part of the project and work something about this specific part and so it it was very smooth in that aspect from from collaboration within the group members and uh, from the tools point of view uh, i think we relied on github which which just provides a platform to share the code we are developing and then we use google drive to store large files. And I think we also used Open Science Framework, which was informed 
by CME library and which was useful as well. So that's my day. Yeah, that's right. Actually, as uh, Amit was talking, I, I just realized that uh, the two of us have actually never even met face to face in person, but, <laughs> but, but I feel like I know him because we've had so much dialogue with uh, Zoom and phone calls and uh, emails and things like that. So, you know, of course, is is as he was saying, the uh, nature of this project is um, very computer intensive. There, there's a lot of data to be stored. There's a lot of data to comb through, and you know the results are all very portable. So, of course, we used uh, open source software like R and Python, uh, and uh, Open Science Framework and Google Drives, uh, email, Skype. Uh, so yeah, many, many electronic uh, technologies to uh, share the progress of the team and the results of the findings and, and um, uh, the outcome of some of these scripts that we've put together. But uh, yeah, I think the, I think the technology uh, platform, uh, uh, platforms that we've been using to share data, uh, part of that with CMU, um, part of that on GitHub and uh, independent of CMU, but very much uh, using Skype and email and some of these other uh, features. Uh, it's been it's been very uh, it's been very smooth. The uh, project evolved over time as well. So as we learned that we were going to store, say, for instance, a very large database, uh, we, you know, OSF was volunteered and GitHub and things like that. So even at the start of the project, I, I, I don't think we knew what everything was going to look like. Uh, nothing that we thought we might need, you know, should have been set up and then it took six months for us to get set up as we needed it, the tools were available and, and became available. Value is immense uh, because I don't have to get three degrees like I have three degrees in material science in natural language processing to work on this project. So collaboration, the value is literally is, is hard to put into words, is the value is immense on that on their day. Uh, I think the challenges can be communication uh, because these are very technical things uh, sometimes. And if you don't know the basic vocabulary uh, to talk to the other person who is complete, from a completely different background, that could be challenging. Um, but in our case, that didn't happen much because I think uh, I have, uh, used a lot of programming and coding while I was in grad school. So I, I knew how to communicate with Mike and other people within the group. And even with uh, when Emma joined from LTI, I, I, we, we have gained enough vocabulary to communicate what we, what we are trying to do. The opportunity, of course, for collaboration is that others have skills, perhaps, that you don't have. Some of the uh, uh, barriers or obstacles that I found uh, were were surprising to me, and 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 I needed to reach out, you know, and talk with some people at the libraries, and and it was very um, collaborative, back and forth, and and I was impressed with uh, some of the coding abilities of some people that that eventually joined joined the group, and and you know brought some Python skills and brought some additional libraries and uh, um, things to use that that I hadn't even thought of uh, as well. So obviously having different perspectives and different skill sets, um, like Amit was saying, you, you one person can't possibly have all of those skill sets. So, so being able to share those skill sets around um, is definitely beneficial and useful. But I agree, the communication, and I would even say uh, in a bit, um, coordination of efforts is somewhat challenging. Uh, sometimes you think perhaps someone's going to do something and they don't, uh, or there are people out there that are duplicating efforts and, and there are two people working on the same thing when, when, when it might be better you know, for one person to focus on something and another person to focus on something else. And I would say that in my opinion on this project, we, we really mitigated a lot of that because I think each of our skills were very somewhat specialized. Like I was looking at web scraping and some of the filtering and uh, we had an assistant that was also working on some Python code and everybody had their, their own little piece of the puzzle to work on. I can think of um, 
one thing that I found, or a number of things that I found satisfying about this, but I think uh, it's like you were saying, a big picture is that this project really started out as 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 a as a thought, as a um, you know I want to go out and I want to do this and scrape these web pages and and you know look at some things and and it was basically two people, three people with the collab involved, uh, you know, coordinating and cooperating. And then this really mushroomed and expanded into uh, the ability to uh, gather some other uh, students uh, in the field and students that had um, these uh, capabilities. And, and just to see the project uh, go from a thought, I guess, uh, almost like a proof of concept to, to like a full blown, hey, this could work and these are the tools that we need and uh, this is how we're gonna make it happen. Uh, to me, that was, that was the maybe turning point of the whole thing and, and, and to see this really get off the ground and not just fizzle. I mean, a lot of projects, uh, you know, maybe start and, and, and you think of some things and it just kind of fizzles. And it, in fact, it was, it was quite the opposite in my opinion. I think, uh, you know, starting slowly, the project really mushroomed and uh, expanded and uh, grew uh, exponentially. And uh, now there's some really good base to continue to move, to move forward. So for me, that, that was the rewarding part personally. Yeah, I means I would add what Mike just said, like it was, I wasn't expecting this project to be this big at this, like it, it's, that's, I think that's very exciting. Like the exciting part is that it became what it became, which we never envisioned while we was, while we were starting this project. And uh, yeah, I learned, I learned a lot, I think in, in this process. But I think another exciting thing which happened through this project, I would add is that we wrote an NSF proposal at the end, which is, um, which wouldn't be possible without having this much sort of back and forth developing this idea, uh, which happened in this very cooperative and collaborative fashion. Uh, so if, if we get the money from NSF, this, this can turn into a very real and very, uh, I don't know, very useful thing for the entire community in coming years. So I'm excited about that. So let's see where we go from there.